All right, good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Willis again. Uh, I'm going to do a short video on the electromagnetic spectrum and radiation. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I'm just going to cover a couple of quick things before we uh, get to rolling on that. Um, there were a couple of issues this week with the assignment with the Kahoot. Um, I changed the link. I updated that on the Google Classroom up here so you guys can give that a shot. Let me know if that's not working. Um, and just kind of a heads up, uh, the plan is next Tuesday... Um, at 10 o'clock, we'll, I'll host a Google Meet for the classroom so that we can kind of talk about the materials that we've been going over. We can kind of touch base right before uh, we get, at, as we get closer towards the end of the year. So I just wanted to get, give you guys that information. All right, so real quick, we're going to kind of hit the ground running with this because I'm going to try to keep the video relatively short. Um, today, um, last week we talked about heat transfer and things like that. This, And I told you we were going to lead into the electromagnetic spectrum, which is one of the cahoots that I gave to you guys. And uh, looking at the answers for the couple of you who have done it, there, there's still some, some questions there, and I want to make sure you guys are in a good spot for this as we move towards, uh, or as you guys move towards ninth grade next year. So we're going to talk a little bit about radiation. We're going to talk a little bit about the electromagnetic spectrum. I'm going to show you guys some graphics today, and I'm going to give you some links to some videos that are just outstanding. Um, the Khan Academy video link that I'm going to give you guys is easily the best physics explanation of the electromagnetic spectrum that I've seen, and that includes me going to college for it. So um, it does a really, really fantastic job of understanding why electromagnetic waves do what they do. So I'm going to let you guys watch that. And then on Tuesday, hopefully, uh, we'll get an opportunity. If you guys have some questions, you can touch base with me on that. All right, so let's uh, let's kind of get the hit the ground running here. All right. So just as always, I've got some notes for you guys that we have here. I'm going to kind of go over um, as we zip through this so you guys can annotate on your copy. Um, keep it as a Google document. Do whatever you want to do with that. Um, throw it into your false notebooks, however you want to take care of that. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit is radiation because radiation is kind of a confusing term. There's two types of radiation. Um, the one we're going to really focus on today is something called non-ionizing radiation. I guess I can go ahead and bold and italicize that. Um, and that is uh, a type of radiation when we're talking about the radiation in the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, so when we're talking about the really, really dangerous stuff that occurs during um, in nuclear power plants and things like that, we're talking about ionizing radiation. And I gave you guys the definition for it here. Um, it can be created uh, through high voltage devices. It can be created through unstable nuclear reactions in the nuclei of an atom. Um, and that's something you guys will talk about a lot more when in your introduction to physical science next year. But I did want to give you that. Um, so again, atoms with unstable nuclei are said to be radioactive um, and also things that give off radiation, right? So emissions that can give off radiation are electromagnetic, which is what we're going to focus on today. And then the particulate radiation, which is going to be the stuff that we see in nuclear explosions and things like that. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys some background information on radiation because that does get a little confusing since they use the same word for that. Um, and just a note here, uh, I wanted to make sure you guys understand that there is a background radiation around us at all times. And that's background from the uh, explosion that created the universe. When we look at the Big Bang, there's a huge radio set of background radiation that we can detect using radio telescopes here on Earth. And that radiation surrounds us in the universe. It, it, the whole universe is bathed in that stuff. So, um, And along with... The fact that stars um, and virtually everything is giving off radiation. So there's going to be a large amount of background radiation that comes from space. We're primarily we're going to be talking about those things. But even here on the Earth, uh, since we use things like Wi-Fi, um, you know, radio waves that get transmitted to car radios and things like that, those are all forms of radiation that are just bouncing around, right? So these are all going to be part of our normal background radiation. All right, so the electromagnetic spectrum. All right, so I have a little diagram here, and there's a much better one over here I'm going to talk about in a moment. But it's the types of, of energy that are found on, or types of electromagnetic radiation that are found and that are given off by objects uh, in space, primarily the sun. We're going to start with this one. But I, I've got examples of each of these things um, that come in other forms than from stars as well. So uh, radio waves uh, are the weakest, the least energetic, right? So let me go over here, and this is going to be a little bit better, I think. Whenever we're talking about radio waves, as we go across the electromagnetic spectrum, they get more energetic, all right? Frequency increases, so the F uh, increases, um, and as we go across here, and the wavelength um, uh, decreases, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about. And this is measured in hertz. You can see the unit of measure that we have right here. 
um, but the energy is going to increase as we move across this moving to the right, right? So when we're talking about electromagnetic waves, there's, there's two real causes of this. Um, uh, the electromagnetic frequency or the electrical field that's going to surround positive things, you're going to have uh, an electric field and it's going to give off some energy and you're going to have a magnetic field uh, which is going to be over here and it's going to give energy back. So these things are going to cycle back and forth, right? So the video that you guys are going to watch from Khan Academy does a really excellent job of explaining what's going on here. But basically what you need to know is that when an, an electric field gives off a magnetic field and a magnetic field can generate an electric field. So this is where this the electromagnetic waves come from is because the, the movement of energy around those particles. Um, and as we move through this, you can see uh, the types of energy that are found on the electromagnetic spectrum, right? So starting from the left, we've got radio waves right here, which you guys are familiar with. AM radio is probably the one that falls right in this band. Uh, FM radio is kind of right on the border between microwaves and infrared. Uh, microwaves, uh, this is uh, your, obviously your microwave oven. Cell phones and Wi-Fi use a microwave frequency. Um, are right on the edge of the microwave frequency. Um, satellite television is in the microwave frequency, so that's what we're going to look at here. Heat, um, just general radiating heat is going to be found here. It's the uh, So we've got radio waves, right? We've got microwaves, we've got infrared, which is going to be found right here. Um, so right in this area, I guess. Uh, then we're going to have optical light, which is a very, very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. So this is going to be the part that our eyes can interpret. Our eyes are actually seeing radiation and converting that to the colors that we see. So, uh, and you can see the colors as they move across the spectrum from red. So if you guys are familiar with the Roy G. Biv thing from um, the light spectrum, that's what we're talking about here. So red is the least energetic color. Violet is the most, the most energetic color. Again, moves to the right. So again, energy is increasing. Um, as the, the, the frequency of those waves increases here, right? So that's going to be important for us to see. Uh, let me clear this up a little bit. All right, so this is the one that we see with our eyes, right? And then these are the ones that are potentially dangerous to us. As we move through this, these have more energy and can cause some real harm to us um, if not using correctly. So obviously ultraviolet we've talked about in class before. Um, we need a small amount of that in our skin to help create vitamin D, but large amounts of that cause things like sunburn, um, potentially like skin melanomas and things like that. So skin cancers and things like that can happen. Small amounts of x-rays are okay. We use them to, uh, to, to peer inside of the human body because those waves have so much energy, they can literally go straight through our soft tissue. And whenever they hit that harder tissue, they slow down slightly. And then the machine measures that kind of shadow uh, to kind of show us what's going on on the inside of the body. So large amount of x-rays are really, really bad, which is why if you've ever had an x-ray, typically the person giving you the x-ray leaves the room. They go hide behind a wall that's got a big lead, lead plate in there to absorb that energy. A couple of x-rays a year, not a big deal. Hundreds of x-rays a year, it could be problematic. Um, and then the most energetic are the gamma waves. They have way, way more energy than anything else on the electromagnetic spectrum. And because of that, they are incredibly, incredibly dangerous. So um, it's one of the reasons that comic books have kind of picked up gamma rays as the thing that creates superheroes, right? So in reality, if you get the dosage of gamma rays they're given to things in comic books, you, you don't get superpowers, you get dead, right? So that's not, not something we're looking for. Um, so obviously, a huge amount of energy, I guess in a comic book world, would be something that would give those characters their powers, right? But in reality... These things are so energetic that they're incredibly bad for human tissue. So this is not something you would want to subject to your, you know, subject yourself to on, on purpose, right? So uh, I, I supplied this link. It's in the student assignment document. I'll let you guys kind of play around with it here. Um, all right. So let's go back to the notes. Whoops. Um, back to the notes here. All right. So and and what I've done here is I've given you guys a real basic explanation of each of these particular things. So radio waves, microwaves, infrared. This is in order from left to right on the diagram up here and I listed them from from weakest to strongest down here from we and we're talking about in penetrative power now we talk about wavelength and the size of the waves themselves uh, radio waves have much bigger wavelengths than gamma rays right but when we're talking about strength of a wave the the smaller the wave is the wavelength is the more penetrative power it has the more energy it's going to be able to carry along with it so smallest but strongest biggest but weakest, which is why we use radio and microwaves for all of the easy stuff, right? Um, all right, so a couple of questions, and I snagged these answers from the NASA.gov site. Excuse me here. Is a radio wave the same as a gamma wave? 
and fundamentally fundamentally they're they're not different right they they operate in the same manner they have different wavelengths and they have different frequencies but they're created by the same mechanism that we talked about that that going that oscillation that going back and forth between things between the electromagnetic field and the magnetic field that is created whenever electrical particles are moving around so um, radio waves, gamma rays, visible light, ultraviolet, all of them are fundamentally the same thing. The difference is the amount of energy that they carry, right? So I wanted to make sure that you guys understood that. Um, and some characteristics that I want you to understand is all of these travel in a wave-like pattern in a transverse wave, which is a vocabulary term I'll add to the bottom. Um, and they all travel at the speed of light, right? Which could probably be described as the speed of an electromagnetic wave. Because remember, light is only one type of energy on the electromagnetic spectrum. So radio waves travel the same speed as light, travel the same speed as gamma rays, right? So they're all traveling at the fastest speed that we are able to, that we can conceivably understand in our universe right now. So um, how are they measured? I gave you guys uh, the units of measure that we use. We measure waves and frequencies. We measure cycles and hertz. Wavelength is measured in meters. When we talk about wavelengths, typically for electromagnetic waves, we're talking about nanometers especially when we get to the gamma rays. Radio waves have, have uh, wavelengths that can be measured in meters, but they get significantly smaller as we move to the right on the periodic table. Um, all right, so uh, let me add the 13th word here, transverse. Um, okay, so these are some terms. I'd like you guys to add some definitions in here. You can use Wikipedia. You can use uh, the videos, my video here, the Khan Academy video, the Learn to Engineering video that I'm going to tag to this for you guys. So I want you guys to just add this. This is some information that will certainly be useful to you next year in physical science. And uh, this will give you a kind of a basic foundation for when you guys get to your physics class later on in high school. So um, I want you guys to go ahead and take care of those particular things. I've got some source information. If you guys want to go play around and get some more information, you can follow these links. Each of the blue things inside of here are links to a NASA um, sp specific example if you guys want to play around with those particular things all right so um also i'm going to supply some links to uh the introduction put out by nasa on what the electromagnetic spectrum is here you can use this uh, to give yourself some more information there's plenty of information over here on the side feel free to use this to, to help out answering any of those questions um and again i'll have the link to this particular diagram which i think they did a really good job on here so all right, guys, um, I'm trying to keep the videos a little shorter because you guys tend to do better with the shorter videos than my longer videos. I know I tend to ramble. So um, on just a couple of notes as we move forward. Try to finish up that quiz. Uh, I've got a Friday assignment for you guys where I want you guys to give me some feedback on the videos and on things that we've done throughout the year. So I would like you guys to do that. I know we're getting real close to the technical end of the year here. So next week I'm going to have a, a little more fun activity, I think, for you guys to kind of work on. But uh Again, I just wanted to give you guys a little springboard that you can use um, to get you started for your physical science stuff next year. So on that note, I hope everything's going well. I hope everything's, I hope everyone is healthy. I hope everybody's doing a good job. And I hope to see you guys on the Tuesday Google Meet. So thanks. Have a good day. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.